Hi, everybody. All right, thank you all for tuning in here to Encore, I don't know, 6 billion. Um, <laughs> we actually got a pretty fun night tonight, despite how <laughs> absolutely soaked the outside is. It is uh, warm and toasty in here. Things are just getting heated up. And actually, for our game one uh, of our first set, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be Shy Guy versus uh, J D John Mark, or as I like to call him, Jark. Um, I have a friend named John Mark, and I call him Jark, so that's why I do that. But uh, that's really interesting, because I believe that uh, John Mark has actually been getting top eight here at Encore kind of recently. Uh, and Shy Guy, for those of you who don't know, used to be, I'm fairly certain, uh, Westchester PR, if he could be considered Westchester, was definitely of that caliber player, to say the least. And uh, we haven't seen him for a hot minute, or I haven't seen him at least. Granted, nobody's seen me for a hot minute either, but but, uh, but anyway, it might be he was underseeded, you know, just purely because he hasn't been here for a while. You know, we don't necessarily know what he can do. But uh, as it stands right now, J J uh, Jark is actually doing a pretty good job having a lead and maintaining it, you know? Some of these older players, you know, guys who were, you know, pretty dominant near the game's initial, you know, release, Oh, well, they still got it. I was about to say, you know, the, you know, all the young upstarts, you know, the John Marks, you know, the Quids, all those people that have just gotten so good. Uh, but when you've been playing the game for as long as Shy Guy has, uh, dating back at least half a decade, you definitely have those fundamentals that in those last hit situations allow you to find the hits. But John Mark managing to find that final hit for himself. The back air does a good job evening things up. Let's see if he can actually do anything with it. Oh, that was beautiful. Goes from the uh, forward air into the up tilt. Up tilt, normal, a pretty good uh, combo starter for Squirtle, but she's, uh, Lucina actually hits because she's so thin and because she has an up B that's invincible. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Only goes for the grab punish. I think kind of reacted a little bit late there. You have so much time in the world if you do successfully footstool the first Squirtle, so you would probably honestly just roll behind and fully charge forward smash even then. But regardless, uh, managing to find the footstool alone is pretty impressive. And now with the Squirtle at 95, I was about to say, forced to switch, definitely. Oh, again, though. This is the thing. John Mark has been doing a really good job of that. These lower percents getting good combos, good juggles, getting a lot of that good stuff started. But then when it comes to those kill percents, all of a sudden, that's where Shy Guy is in control. He gets those hard reads, especially at the ledge. So if you're Jar, you have to be worried about what the, like, you have to keep yourself off the ledge as much as possible, which is so hard to do against a player like Shy Guy. All right, yeah, looking for those kind of offstage kills, things like that back air, but these sorts of coverage is a little bit too tricky. And now with uh, Shot Guy back on stage, oh, that up air was such a threat, but a great up B out of shield. Such an important tool in this matchup. Honestly, almost every matchup up B out of shield is just a fantastic option. But uh, in particular, being able to even up the stock count here. And now you're facing down the Squirtle. 61% is also a little bit of an awkward percentage for Squirtle to deal with. You know, he might be able to string one or two hits together, but he's not going to be killing it. He's not going to be getting those crazy combos. I think he's still staying the Squirtle because he wants to get off the ledge, abuse that smaller hurt box, that tinier frame, and the fact that Squirtle is one of the best getting in and boxing characters. And that's usually where Swordy struggle. But now that he's managed to get that percentage, 96 on to Char. This is actually looking, oh, this is honestly pretty scary for both players. 73, Shy Guy doesn't necessarily have to worry about dying to too much right now, but he cannot get too comfortable. This is not a lead in the least. 113% onto Jark, but he's with the stage control. We haven't really seen him get any kills from here. Looking for the neutral air in the end, gets the shield grab. Forward air, is that going to do it? That must have been some questionable DI. It felt like he went right to the blast zone with that one, but it makes sense. He was DIing away, anticipating, trying to avoid that follow up. But once the follow up connected, he went right into the blast zone. And Jark, despite being down a uh, majority of that game, manages to clean things up, got that kill when it mattered most. All right, now it seems like we're going to be they're getting ready for the bands. And, ah, yes, thank you. Ryan coming in clutch, making sure that we get the wide pan, really get to, you know, get the, the best of each of these players. Beautiful profiles. Yep. All right, we're not going to be seeing any character switches. Makes sense. But uh, as we move into game two... I'm wondering what exactly Shy Guy needs to do here. It felt like for the most part, he was playing it pretty well. Uh, 
Oh, but I think part of it has to do with those juggle situations. When he got tossed in the air, he just ate a ton of percent. And also, the con okay, the other part of this, his punish game wasn't necessarily on par for what I've known it to be in the past, but he's absolutely changing the way that this game is being played right here. 72% on Jark, almost uncontested. 40% is not uncontested, but nonetheless, it feels like Shy Guy is in control here. That being said, that forward tilt and neutralize has been such a powerful option. It's almost like a pseudo, like, safer dash attack. And great job pressuring the shield, but making sure to cross up. That means that the uh, up he had a shield actually gets punished. And that sort of space given allows Shy Guy to go to the Ivysaur. But uh, Ivysaur is a little bit, actually, the neutral seems kind of tricky against John Mark's Lucina. Once again on the ledge. This is where, oh, in that game one, Shy Guy took so many stocks there, but John Mark seems to have cleaned up his uh, ledge play, his disadvantage there, because he's actually able to reverse onto Shy Guy, and that's where all this damage has come from. Another forward air putting him way off. Oh, great air dodge. Recognizing, reacting to that Charizard Flare Blitz. That absolutely would have killed him. Just across the stage, he would have disappeared. Nice little chip from Flame Breath. But this is where this is where things are scary because Zard is such a beast. Up smash out of shield, such a threat, and that up air was one of the only aerials from Lucina that wouldn't be killing at that point. Yeah, he's looking for it. You see, go, I like this how Shy Guy is going for these full hops and all oh, the armor coming in clutch. I don't think up throw is gonna do it just quite yet. And now that it's stale, maybe the next grab won't do it either. Oh, but the shield was low. You did not need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Not even gonna charge the smash attack or anything like that. Knows that at that point, pretty much anything will kill. And Shy Guy, you know, he did his, he did basically did his job. Got him to about 110, and that up air enough to finish the job there. So we're once again in this state of the game: Squirtle versus Lucina. But now, earlier on, we saw how Shy Guy got into tons of damage. But it seems that he's not able to do that this time around. Trapped in the corner, taking all sorts of percent. That's the combo startup, but it doesn't get the follow-up. Good DI from John Mark actually avoids any type of serious damage. And now he's once again in control. Another up he out of shield. So constantly just it doesn't feel like Shy Guy's able to get anything started. Right there, two forward airs is some solid percent, but can't actually get any type of meaningful follow-up. And finally, I like that. Before he was going for the drop back, back air, but that time he recognized the exact position that Shy Guy was actually getting to the ledge from, and instead goes for the drop from ledge, jump into back air. And that gives John Mark this massive lead. Lead that's slowly disappearing here, honestly. Up smash from Squirtle, pretty powerful. Not enough to do it just quite yet, though. And now... John Mark at 122. If Shy Guy can manage to clean up the stock with another Ivysaur up there, something like that, this is absolutely an even game. But if John Mark does get back to the stage, just like here, we've seen already he can get tons of percent with Shy Guy in the corner, and that percent is starting to rack up immediately. 57 and possibly even growing here. Another one of those forward tilts that's been such a good option because it also deals with the Razor Leaf. And just like I said, as soon as John Mark got back to the stage, he managed to do all of this percent, all of this damage. He's on the cusp of taking the set right here. A forced switch to Zard. He only has one jump left. He's going to go for the Flare Blitz and that time doesn't react with an air dodge. Instead gets the counter in order to win the set. John Mark taking it 2-0 over Shy Guy.